This is the Five Point Play Podcast, the Die Hard Duke Basketball Fans Podcast. Duke moving on to the Sweet 16. Kind of started a little rocky against Vermont, and then they just came out there and punched my boys, Jamie, in the mouth. Uh, Jared McCain, obviously 30, just shot the lights out. Um, I only said AC, if, if I'm going to. Two okay. days into college, and I'm three lectures behind. There's this guy, let's name him Colin. He says he wants to be mine, but it doesn't really sit with me quite right because he doesn't really. Oh, like y'all ran into Jared McKay? Like an- yeah, we 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 uh we fought around and found out. Um, but I will say uh that if I'm going to lose, I would rather just get blown out, and that's pretty much you did that. say that. And so, you did say that because then there's no second guessing, there's no second guessing when when you lose. Um, in that fashion. So, um, you know, kudos to JMU on a great season, but this is a Duke podcast and uh, proud of the way Duke played. Really, I mean, defensively, they, they were fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. And to me, started, we'll get into the Vermont game too, because I want to touch on that. I don't want to just gloss over that, because I think that, that game set the tone for what happened um, on, on Sunday. I think that that game set the tone from the beginning. Uh, the effort levels, even when things were kind of a little bit back and forth and a little bit sloppy offensively, I thought that mm-hmm. Duke set the tone on the effort level. It started with Kyle Filipowski. The guards, you know, kind of brought the energy that they didn't have the last couple uh, games prior to that where, where we lost. And, you know, I'll say this, AC, and I'll pass it over to you, that we, we talked about in our last podcast leading up to the tournament that – I don't know what can happen in those players only meetings, but clearly something clicked and clearly something worked. And John even talked about it in his post game mm-hmm. press conference after the, the JMU destruction. So something clearly is clicking in these teams. And hopefully these players are going to continue. I don't want it to be, oh, we, we won by 40 and now we can get complacent again. That's the big fear. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But clearly something worked uh, last weekend. Yeah, and I, I don't see like I'm not. I don't think I'm afraid of this team, like flaming out because they don't try hard because of what we saw against NC State or whatever else. I think um, I, th- I think it's a two part thing, right? I think players players only meeting players only meetings. There's two parts to them. That one part is you have the meeting, and then all all the shit gets aired out, and then and then you play whatever games happen after that. And if you're still doing the same old stuff, players only meeting was worthless. It meant nothing, and now you you don't like season's over anyway for for this team, and this this particular squad will never play again together as as this group. So it doesn't really matter to them. But you have a players only meeting and you lose, it's meaningless at that point. Like obviously it didn't matter, but you have a players only meeting and then you come out and do what Duke did this weekend, which was build belief. That's a huge thing, man. I think that's that's enormous right there. And this team is a team that we've said all year, and we felt before the season started could beat anybody in the nation, and now you see us. In a position to do so like once again against another team that presumably is going to give us trouble because of the physicality and stuff. But and we'll get to them in a minute. But just with what they did against Vermont, man, with Flip, like not taking to it, taking one shot against Vermont. And yeah, I, I know what people were were saying during the game, but I, that was by design, y'all. And you saw the fruits of that afterwards to the game after against JMU, where the shooting was paramount and guys were hitting, whereas they weren't to start the the Vermont game because getting used to the neutral court. Whatever else was bugging them, you know, what I mean that that all that got shaken off. So I, I think it was all worth it, man. Yeah, it was certainly worth it. When whenever you get two wins and both of them um, convincingly, you know, mm-hmm. I thought that that Vermont game, you know, I think some people were freaking out, but Duke had full control of that game, yeah. and that was with you know Paul Filipowski only taking you know one, one or two shots, mm-hmm. but he played great. You know, it's very rare that you have a second team All American play great and only take, only take two shots. It's a testament to his effort yeah. level and, and, and doing a lot of other things on the court. Jack, uh, I'll bring you here next. Kind of just sum up that weekend overall for Duke and what it can mean going forward. This team can go to Phoenix if they keep playing like that. It's it's two more games of just playing loose, playing like you want it, and uh, I'm I'm proud to be a Duke fan after that. That was that was an insane. Not that I'm ever not proud to be a Duke fan. Just get that out of the way. But that was an insane. Thanks for, thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I'm proud to be a Duke fan. <laughs> I'm 
I mean, you could be a JMU fan, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Mm. We're moving on. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of this group. I mean, the players only meeting, if that if that's what, like, sparked this, that's awesome. Um, I will say that, you know, I, I had heard some not-so-great things coming into the tournament, and I am thrilled that, at least from what I've seen, they appear not to be the case. That that team looked like they wanted to play together. They wanted to play for the name on the front of the jersey. And again, I I'm just gonna repeat what TK said. Like hats off to Flip. Took one shot in that Vermont game, and yet I think he was probably the best player on the floor that night. I agree. Mm-hmm. Like box score be damned, he had I mean he he stuffed the stat sheet actually if you look at it. Like yeah. scoring be damned. Box he score did exactly was, what was asked of him. Yes, thank you, AC. <laughs> like two steals, three you know, three blocks. Steals, three blocks. Six, twelve rebounds. Was it, was it twelve or thirteen rebounds? He had a lot of rebounds. He was clutch. He did everything that was asked of him. And when the entire rest of the team is clicking, when you have a dud from the guy who is your most talented player scoring wise and you still win by a decisive margin even if the game was closer than the final score that's a huge win and it really you know it lets the team it lets the team get a little extra confidence yeah and, and they're playing they're, it showed, they're playing positive it showed, yeah. yeah it showed sunday yeah it, it I'm, showed. I'm fully excited for dallas yeah i think they, it did show sunday i thought that um, what they were able to build basically in that first half against Vermont, it really started to translate in that second half, and then the lid just came off against JMU. Pablo, from an X's and O's perspective, because we've already kind of talked about you know the players only meeting and the effort levels. From an X's and O's perspective, from game one to game two, <coughs> what did you like about what, Jay, or what you know JMU wasn't able to do to stop Duke? Yeah, so I think, you know, the game plan, obviously, you know, John Shire was going to take take a look at some things. And I think we talked about it in the podcast prior to that is a uh, or we might have talked about it on spaces or Twitter or something. Uh, we were just talking about offensive adjustments. Um, John made those. He made those offensive adjustments because what JMU does on defense is really similar to what Houston is going to do. Um, so the blueprint is there. Um, I think getting fouled. Uh, Falipowski. Filipowski, you know what I'm saying? On on the move. <laughs> we don't we don't need Falipowski. Yeah, Filipowski. I know, I know, right? Filipowski. <laughs> yeah. We don't need turnover of Powski either. Yeah. Uh I think, you know, I think the game plan, like I said, was to get Filipowski moving. You know what I mean? And when Filipowski plays a good floor game, I think that's when Duke's at it at their best. Uh mm-hmm. when he's not forcing when he's not forcing anything, uh when he's not trying to force his way to the basket, getting those stupid offensive offensive fouls and things like that. When he's able to, you know, set the high ball screen, roll out of it, you know, ghost out of it or whatever, and then make a play, hit the shooters or get to the rim. I think that's the best version of Filipowski. And so uh I think that might have been the goal, you know what I mean? Is to let Filipowski really mm-hmm. do his thing because they knew that, you know, the trapping the trapping and all that stuff was gonna happen. Um, and I think he was really decisive uh, in everything that he did, and that made everything happen for Duke. And the last point I'll make is um, something that me and AC talk about a lot is uh, how, you know, our guards on our ball screens, our guards always get pushed out to the sidelines. This game, you see guys really turning tight on the corners mm-hmm. and on the ball screens, and they were actually going at the rim and making plays. So I think that's what yeah. helped uh, helped us the most. <laughs> Yeah, D, uh, I thought uh, coming into the, the year, obviously, guard play is going to be what wins. And obviously, when the lid comes off and Jeremy Kane goes 8 of 11 from 3, that, that's going to help. But I thought overall that was as good as uh, Jeremy Roach has played in a couple weeks. I thought Tyrese Proctor was fantastic. And so when you have all three of your guards playing at that level, you can beat anybody. Yeah. Uh, we've said multiple times this year that these guys came back for a reason. Their own record is saying that this is what they wanted to come back for. And that JMU game, all of those guards on the perimeter played as if they did not want to go home. They wanted to go to Dallas. (coughs) And if Duke continues that trend 
upward with the effort that they showed against JMU, sky's the limit. I'm not afraid of anybody in this tournament. Yeah, I, th- I think we'll, we'll certainly talk about, uh, you know, getting into the, the Houston game and then potentially anybody that we play after that if we win. But AC kind of like bring this all, all together. I, I'm just kind of floored because I, I thought that, you know, talking about the JMU game specifically, I thought that they would try to do the same things that Vermont did, but JMU mm-hmm. was better at it, you know, especially the way that they played against Wisconsin. But sure. at this point, though, the guards just said, fuck that, nah, we're just going to take over this game right away. And if they keep that same mentality and they, you know, honestly shoot the same way, Houston's in trouble. Yeah, and one of the things that I liked, especially once again, you, like you said, bringing, bringing everything full circle between X's and those players only meeting and everything else. One thing I liked and I'm hoping continues is that we established somewhat, somewhat at least of, of what our defensive identity is, was during the season, everything else. Like one of the things about us throughout the entire season was you're going to be under your scoring average when you play us whether that's because of pace or whether that's because we're playing really good defense. I thought this weekend you take two teams, both of them who scored a decent clip. We held them under each team, both under, under 20 points below their scoring average. That's that's in my opinion, that's a good, that's a good deal right there, especially considering how kind of fast paced the JMU game was. It wasn't a game of slow down and don't let them score. We just didn't let them score and we still scored our points on the other side of it. And that's why you see the lopsided victory the way you did. So, in my opinion, man, establishing that that defensive identity was super important, too. Yeah, and also, you know, creating 26 turnovers across these two games and mm-hmm. having single-digit turnovers for us, you know, 15. I mean, you're almost, you know, close to doubling up the, the turnover margin in those two games. That's mm-hmm. been a thing we've talked about a lot, especially the stupid turnovers yeah. we do. They limited the debt. Um, obviously, they should have come out there and out-rebounded both of those teams. They did. Defensively, I thought we had great game plans. Again, as long as we kind of keep uh, flip out of foul trouble, I almost call him foul, foul passy too. As long as we keep him out of uh, foul <laughs> trouble, we should be in, in, in really good shape going forward. Uh, Jack, you're shaking your head. I, I, I you know, um, I'm just really impressed with what I saw because I, I, I was not exactly the, the most confident going into that weekend. But you know, tell people why they should be confident going into Dallas. First of all, it's Duke. Like, at the end of the day, it's Duke. Duke wins basketball games significantly more often than they lose them. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Um, second, I, I really I like the matchup with Houston a lot. I think it favors Duke. I'm, I'm really – I think it's just going to be a really good game. I'm excited for it. But even after that, it's like – I just feel like any any team that Duke plays, even even State, who you know we just watched Duke lose to, I think Duke has the favorable matchup. Yeah, I don't even want to think about uh, the Marquette State matchup yet. No, I I don't want to think past it either. I'm just saying, like, you, if you want to be confident in Dallas, you have to be confident beyond the that's first true. game. That's facts. Oh, yeah. that was fire, Jack. That was fire. That was fire. True. I, mean, I like that. It. I like that. That was fire. Um, yeah, let's get right into it then. You know, I, I think that a lot of times when you have two comfortable wins, um, it, it's so much easier for us to belabor a lot of different points when we're not playing well. We play really well, so let's just get to the predictions, right? Um, D, I'll bring you in on this one first because I, I you know, won't break down because we have a coach's corner coming up after this. Is that right, AC? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. so we'll break a lot. A lot of the uh, the X's and O's specific down, but after you watched uh, the Houston A and M game, what do you think that Duke can do to kind of take advantage of of the vaunted uh, Houston defense? Well, if if we're gonna judge Houston off of the game that we watched after that Duke game, <clears throat> that's not the one. I, Duke would have been up twenty five against them the way they played. Uh, I mean, I don't think Duke needs to do anything that they haven't been doing this tournament. They need to play the same way. Um, don't don't get down early. You're not coming back 12 points against Houston in the NCAA tournament. It's not going to happen. Um, you need to go punch for punch, or you need to put your foot on their neck and end it early. And if Duke plays, and I don't, and TK, you said if if Jared McCain hits eight for ten, they'll be fine. I don't think he has to hit eight for ten. If he does, great. But I think just consistent shooting, be a threat, 
take open jump shots, get downhill to the lane. That's what Duke has done this tournament that has been the difference maker. And all these people on the timeline saying Duke doesn't have a chance here, Duke doesn't have a chance there, that Houston's defense is so much better than anybody else we've ever seen in the – I don't give a fuck. Like, just just play Duke basketball. If they played the way they played the first weekend, Houston's in a world of, world of trouble. Yeah, Pablo, kind of kind of piggyback off of that. And, and I think that my point with Jerry McCain is I think it's unfair to sit there and be like, okay, if he, if he goes eight for 11 again. Uh, obviously, if he, if he does that, then we're going to blow him out of the gym. Super. I just, yeah. I, just don't, I don't think it's fair to, to expect him to go another no. eight for 11 or anything like that. But that doesn't mean that um, they do, can't win that game. They absolutely can because we still have Jeremy Roach. We still have Tyrese Proctor. And if they continue – the positive momentum that they built over the last couple of games, Houston's in trouble. Pablo, I mean, talk about the yards. Yeah, so before I make any of my points, I can just say if you think Duke is going to win, if you think Duke is going to lose, you can basically kiss my ass. But that's besides the point. Um, I think it goes into you know, everything. Go. I'm just saying, everything that D said, there's absolutely nothing that he said that I disagree with. Everything he said, that is like the basic baseline analysis of how you win the game is exactly what he said. And that's exactly my sentiment. You know what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. I just paired the same thing that he said. There's nothing special that we have to do. We have to just play our game. The only difference um, I think that we'll see, uh, obviously, from Houston is that we're going to see better athletes all pause. They're going to be long all pause. They're going to be longer. You know what I'm saying? And with mm -hmm. that comes with. You know, what I mean, defense is going to be flying at you a lot faster and they're going to close out a lot quicker. So a lot of those times, like, you know, let's say, for example, like a Filipowski short roll, Mark Mitchell short roll. And, you know, you got a guy in a dunker spot on a short corner cutting to the basket. You see that pass. They're going to probably meet you at the rim. So you're going to have to mm -hmm. go up strong. And none of that pump fake bullshit that Mark Mitchell be doing. You just got to go up. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, at the end of the day. We good. I feel good about it, and and, and I'll say it one more time. If y'all didn't hear me the first time, if you think Duke is gonna lose, you kiss my black ass. That's what it, that's what it come down to. Let's go. Bring bring it bring it the energy. I love that. Uh, you did bring up Mark Mitchell. I did. I, I hate to bring up any negatives. I thought that Mark didn't play his best against JMU. A lot of times, AC it was because he kind of hesitated when he had opportunity to go up strong and just. That's one one thing Philip Housey did really well. That he mm -hmm. got on and flushed it. Where Mark Mitchell, you need to do that too because you know the time to call him the X Factor is over. Everybody knows you know what these teams are going to do at this point. But Mark Mitchell has to take you know the opportunities that the defense is clearly giving him. To that's mm -hmm. the one. That's the one though, Jack. Right? That that dunk was the one time. You know he was one for six. He had other opportunities where he didn't take it up strong. Um, which can against a team like Houston that can open things up for Filipowski and, and our shooters. So kind of talk about, you know, what Pablo just said there, you see, and, and what can Mark Mitchell do to kind of clear his head and be like, okay, I, I have this ability because we know that mm -hmm. he does based on the picture that Jesse showed. We know he has the ability to do it, but what can mm -hmm. he do to get his line right to be able to execute? No, I think I think I think you're right. I think the the hesitation's got to stop. Even even flip, it was it was actually awesome to see like kind of success breed um, intensity for flip because he kind of went up weak on that that one play where he got the dunk that everybody talks about. He kind of went up weak twice, got got the two rebounds off of it, and then got fed up and just went up strong with it. Like cool, like do that, Mark. I mean, and Mark, look, Mark tried. He tried a second dunk. He got blocked by Friedel or whatever. Like no, Mark didn't score the way that you would want a Mark Mitchell to score. However, we still won that game in a blowout and he didn't get 10 points. So you can, you can cross that off the, off the list now. But one thing he did do, he had four assists, zero turnovers. He was still looking for the guards. Well, he got the ball in good spots. He was still positioning himself well to still affect the offense. 
it's not about Mark Mitchell's stat line with this team necessarily. It's about is he effective or not. And I thought Mark was still effective in that game against JMU, and I damn sure, sure thought he was effective against Vermont. So I agree. Sure. So I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and say he had the world's best game ever. Absolutely not. But I do think that Mark was effective, and I think that needs to carry over for Houston because one of the ways you can beat Houston is doing exactly what we do, which is you make the middle, you get the middle attack, and then you have somebody waiting on the baseline or in a dunker spot. You're good. Like if Mark Mitchell's gonna sit around on three point line and shoot threes, then we're toast. Like that's that's the difference right there. So I think, and we haven't seen him do that, you know, the rest of the season ever since the beginning of the year. So I, I highly doubt Houston's going to play drop coverage because that really that would that would fuck up what they normally do. Like, they're not, not going to go outside of themselves to play Duke. Like they're going to play like them at least for the start of the game. So I really think Mark can have a really positive impact to start this game, just like you're mm-hmm. saying by by being a strong attacker. Um, I, I think that's that's a huge deal in my opinion. So Houston's going to play like. They want to play, and Duke's gonna hopefully play. Yeah, like they're number one seed. Play. They should play like they right, want to play. Exactly. And, and you know, Pablo, we were talking off camera about this that you were talking about that Houston's gonna have all the pressure on them. She's kind of explained mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Think about it, right? Duke is coming in. Everybody expecting to lose. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's really no pressure on Duke. You know what I'm saying? What's the pressure on Duke other than, you know what I'm saying, you're Duke, we want you to win, whatever, whatever, our fan base, I got it. But, you know, number one, Houston is number one seed. Number two, everybody expecting them to win anyway. You know what I'm saying? Number three, they're at home. You know what I'm saying? Number four, they haven't went that far. You know what I'm saying? They haven't, they've never won a championship. You know what I'm saying? And lastly, you know, it's like they want to beat Duke. Cause it's still Duke at the end of the day. It doesn't matter that mm-hmm. they're seated higher or whatever the case may be. Everybody wants to beat Duke. If you can say, if you can put that on your resume, say, Hey, I beat Duke in the sweet 16 elite eight final four championship, national championship, whatever, you know what I'm saying? That kind of boosts your stock. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, they have all the pressure on them. All, all, all our guys got to do is go out there and just win. You know what I'm saying? And just mm-hmm. beat their ass, play their game. You know what I'm saying? And if we play our game, we're not going to get no extra kudos for winning because at the yeah. end of the day, look at the national media. Look at, look at what, look at, look at the narrative now. You know what I mean? The narrative was Duke. Oh, they're the best team in the nation starting the season. Then it went from that to, they don't have no dogs. You know what I'm saying? Now we won these games. Now they, oh, they could give Houston some real trouble. Motherfucker. We knew that's what it was from the beginning. You just mm-hmm. didn't believe. You yep. know what I mean? So since yep. your bitch ass didn't believe, that didn't mean we didn't believe. So it's all good. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? So we're going we gonna to continue to do what we do. You know what I'm saying? We're about to whip Houston's ass. And y'all could kiss my ass if y'all think we're going to lose. <laughs> That's just it. Facts. Three so. times. Facts. Tell me, I, I can't follow that. Go ahead, Jeff. Houston, yeah, they all have plus wings fans. They play incredible defense. This is going to be the third team in a row Duke plays that doesn't have a guy over six foot nine. Yep. Just because they have Pablo, you're going to go crazy. Just because they have link doesn't mean they have size. Hey, yo. Hey. <laughs> it. It's the truth. Oh, Look. Hey. <laughs> Look, I'm going to stick to basketball terminology here and let everyone else get their double entendres in. <laughs> Just because they have a bunch of guys with a lot of length of really a bunch of wingspans like that does not mean that they have <laughs> that is unnecessary um doesn't mean they have like right mm-hmm. they start three guys three guards who are six three and six one and i want to say six one if memory serves i can't yeah, remember six, one, six, two, six, three or something like that or six two six two six one something like yeah. that they got a small back small backcourt they got a small black court. Yeah. Yeah. Small All brothers. All the, brother, forwards don't get... they, the forwards that they run, they get like consistent, like 20 plus minute runs are six, seven, six, eight. Yeah. Yeah. And they only play seven. They play seven dudes, which you should. They in play the seven. Occasionally, there, there is there is that uh, that center, that six foot nine center that yeah. got a bit of burn because of foul trouble last game. But tomorrow. They ain't gonna be able to handle our guys, man. No, they be able to no, they're not. Duke, Duke has yeah. the height advantage. Duke yeah. has the height advantage. That's not a question. It's sure. like, and, and you got to think good. about it too, right? Not to cut you off, but you know what I'm saying. Anytime you have a, a team like Houston, right, a really aggressive team on defense and shit like that, a really physical team, they foul a lot. They How many? There's like four team. guys foul out in that yeah, game against X Fan, right? They're, they're back. They're a whole backcourt. So they're back court. They didn't walk on getting minutes in regulation. So 
that's gonna Come play, on. you know what I'm saying? That's gonna play into what we do. You know what I'm saying? We got great free throw shooters. So mm-hmm. I don't think we have anybody shooting less than what, 75% from the line, maybe 70 something percent from the line. I think flips uh, in the mid sixties, but that's yeah, I think, I think flips in the mid sixties, but outside of him. Last few games, Mark is down for sure. Okay. Mark's down, yeah. But none of the guards. And yeah. we got a bunch of guards who can drive and like finish up the hook. Yeah. We got guys that can get to the hoop strong and the recipe for disaster with the amount of fouling that Houston does. We've been we've been saying all year that one of the problems that, that we have is when we play guards, uh opposing guards that have, you know, more length and height and stuff like that than we do. And that can cause us problems. Now we have the advantage of it coming into this tournament. We mm-hmm. kind of all were like, yeah, I mean, if we're going to get one of these long seats here, that would kind of be the one we would, we would prefer. And mm-hmm. so that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to you know, go out there and win. I think we will, but that's besides the point. I think that it really comes down to the, like, we, we have to continue to attack because they're going to be foul prone. And if we get 45 free throw attempts like AM had. That game's over because we're not going 29 or 45. Facts. Um, I, if Duke imposes their will early, just like they did against JMU, the, the game is over. It, there's not a chance that Houston's going to be able to keep up with the type of physical basketball that Duke is capable of playing. Now, we've watched every single game this season. We've seen physical Duke games, and we've seen Duke kind of, you know, tuck their tail and, and just – wait for the 40 minutes to be over and, and then go to the locker room. But the difference here is everybody on this team knows that this is a win or go home situation. This is not a, well, well we can go to practice and then we, we, we play Virginia tech on, on Thursday or, or Pittsburgh on third. You, you know what I mean? It's you see catching goal. strays. But that was the first thing. We should have beat tech. We beat Texas this year. Cause we should have though. That's the thing. But it's, it's a win or go home. And everybody knows that. And I think it showed this weekend. And if they do the same thing coming up on Friday, I, I don't see an issue. I, I don't see a a way Duke loses if they if they impose their will early. Is the best way I know how to put it on both sides of the ball. It's the correct I mean, way to like, put it. We have they don't they look. Here's the deal, right? I'm wearing the I don't give a fuck shirt today for a very specific reason. D, I think you are too. Yes, we Lord. heard the same song and dance when we played Texas Tech a couple of years ago in in the the Sweet 16. They, we were we it became a pick'em, and I think I think it actually the Vegas line ended up jumping over the the Texas Tech. If I'm not mistaken, they were like a one and a half point uh, favorite to start that game because that was the first time that year I believe that Duke was not the favorite um, during that season. So. Never the did. world, the world was already saying like any any line number. By the way, under under four and a half for Houston on towards Houston side. Go ahead and take that shit. And this is betting advice for AC today. Um, <laughs> but look, man, like we heard the same song and dance with Texas Tech. Look, I just like you you hear the dude right now on on Instagram talking about we done with the nineties. I'm done with defensive teams in the tournament. Like no more. Like when you can't score, dude, I'm done with you. Like LJ Cryer, all he does is sit around and shoot threes. All right, Jamal Shedd is twenty eight percent three point shooter. After once they started Big Ten, uh, Big Twelve play. Before that, he was shooting against Louisiana Monroe and Texas, Texas Wesleyan, and other teams like that. His stats got inflated that way, and he's still on the season, still only a thirty-one percent three-point shooter. We can handle these cats, man. On defense, we can do, we can play our game and and work against what it is that they like to do. The main things that have to happen: Flip can't get in foul trouble because we need that motherfucker for this game. Like we, his size advantage, what he does on the court is super important. He's been very good about that lately. I want to see that continue. I want to make it like, but t- Houston's not going to put him in any situations that's going to get him in foul trouble. All right. We're changing venues. So all the hot shooting you saw from Houston against Texas A&M that goes out the window. Cause now you got a completely new venue. So now everything is straight up. Everybody's playing equal, equal playing field. And yeah, we're going to be in their, their home gym or whatever. We were in Baylor's home gym when Shire and them won. We are damn well. So we've been we've been in home gyms throughout the tournament throughout the years, bro. I'm happy. I'm happy we're playing in their home gym. Funeral colors. Let's go. Give me the black jerseys. I'm done with these cats, man. Fuck these dudes, man. We it's 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 toast. I'm telling you right now, this is it done. I'm done with this. Like I, I'm done fretting. I'm done fretting. Teams got to match up against Duke. We don't have to match up against them. They got to match up against us, man. We got five on the floor. That part. You can't stop all five of us. You can't. Yeah. I don't care how good your defensive squad is. You can't stop all five players. That's not how defense is made, man. Nah, I'm I'm good, bro. We good. Yeah, that's yeah. That part. It, it's crazy that's that fun. it's like the Duke is only playing offense, and we have to match up with their defense. No, that's not the case. It's there's two sides to this court, guys. 
and the other team has to match up with Duke, and good fucking luck. Because that's, that's what I'm gonna saying. Be a tough ask, and that's what I've been saying all week. Duke is a bad matchup for Houston. Yes, he's a bad Houston. matchup for anyone. I'm telling you, that's a fact. But I'm just talking about this game right now. Duke is a bad matchup for Houston. As long as we do what we got to do, we straight. The thing about the other thing about Houston, and I'll just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? Is that another key for Duke is and like Houston, we already know they're not an offensive juggernaut. You know what I'm no. saying? So we don't have to worry about that part. Their defense is their offense. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? As long as we keep, you know what I'm saying, our thing, the main thing. We're gonna be all right, you know what I'm saying, and yep. we're a pretty goddamn good defensive team too. So, we all right, man. We all right. Yep. Yeah, I think everybody's focusing on the fact that we shot the, you know, the one sound, but defensively mm -hmm. we're we're very strong and our very strong. Our advantage. Turn the lights out on defense. Yeah, you know, that's that's Come on. I mean, so, Give the defense some credit. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, and I think that it, if our guards continue to play solid defensively leading with Proctor, and then Phil Paskey continues to do what he does, and then I'll give a shout-out to uh, Mark Mitchell and Sean Stewart, who I think, you know, I think Sean, he might be like that sixth man at this point. You know, because he's going to be... He had a good game against JMU, too. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's going to be a short rotation uh, for both of these teams, and so if, if it's straight up five and five, then I'll take our five. Yeah, absolutely. We, could, we, can, we can use Sean's athleticism in this game, too, right. in, that, in, that, uh, in that dunker spot. We can definitely yep. use it. Cause he going up, he's oh, yeah. trying to dunk. He's trying to dunk on your ass. He ain't pump faking shit. He's just trying to yeah. dunk on your ass. The, the Jeremy Roach, you know, finding um, Sean Stewart for those lines. That's kind of like what I would like to see happen with Mark Mitchell. But you know, I'm not asking Mark Mitchell to jump the way that Sean does. But he has the athletic ability to sure. you know, to to execute in that in that role. So I think Sean could Sean could have a big game here. I think so, man. I think that's important, right? Especially you talking about we talking about building leads and stuff. Houston's just like every other defensive team in the country. You get a lead on them, they ain't coming back from it. So if we bury them quick, look, they score seventy four points a game, okay? And that's the, we're talking about the number two team in the country scoring seventy four points a game. Shitty, all right. And I guarantee you, they're gonna be under that when they play Duke. So you're talking about a team that's gonna score like sixty five points. We're gonna be up around eighty, bro. Telling you right now, I don't care about that defense. I don't care about that defense. I really don't. I don't. I don't. I don't give a fuck. I, it's on the shirt. It's on the thing. I don't give a fuck, man. Like, get out of here with that defense, bro. I'm done with it. I'm done with it, man. I'm done talking about that defense. I agree. All right, well, D, go ahead. No, I, I, I completely agree. Like, I'm, I'm just sick of hearing about it. Uh, it's on the local radio. It's on national media. It's all over my timeline. I don't care. I Good. do not care. Good. Why isn't anybody talking about how Houston is going to? Act when no, they when, just put up 95 points, though. D, that's why against yeah. Texas AM, who's also yeah, a great no, they gave up 95 points, or Nate gave up. Sorry, they put up 100, excuse me. So they put up 100. They, so they gave up 95. Why is no one talking about that? They should have given up about 110 if yeah. AM can hit free throws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the game's not close if AM hits half their missed free throws. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to say, like, the one it. thing I won't do around, around this town at this point is listen to talk radio. I just can't do it. Yeah, it's getting – it's bad, especially Tim Donnelly, that dude. He's horrible. That dude is <laughs> – He's horrible. We get um, it, dude. Don't like Duke. Next. Um, I will say you that – sound like people up here. Oh, my God. The, talk radio, the sports talk radio here sucks. I'm glad, honestly, to hear it. I'm glad to hear that we can't be used. I love that shit. I love that. I, I think it's motivation – for our guys, like, well, like, I was just remember what Quinn said. Remember what Quinn Cook said. Never so the what? underdog. Never the underdog. No, but I mean that. If nobody believes in you, if all you hear or read or see is, well, have fun in Dallas and go sightseeing because Houston's going to run you out of the gym. That's going to galvanize a group. Nobody wants to keep hearing that. Hey, not as much as not as much as Dan Hurley being galvanized that he has to go from New York to Boston. That's a he tough, has to travel. Like a really tough His team has travel. to travel. Tough travel, right there, bud. Travel. You, you might have to go the the <laughs> few hours north, staying in the northeast. That's the softest shit hey, I've ever hey, heard, bro. Hey, D, talk about that a little bit because that's a great fucking point. You know what I'm saying? As far as galvanizing the group, just based off of the you know the rhetoric and the, and the nonsense that you're hearing all day. You know what I mean? Like, talk a little bit about that, bro. Well, it, I mean, it's. It's human nature to to take offense to that, right? And 
now you're you're in a locker room situation for a whole week and you if if i believe in you then you need to believe in you because you believe in me and it, it just it, it's going to work like i don't know how to describe it really but you're going to you're going to you're going to play harder for the guy next to you because nobody else believes y'all can do this except the people in that locker room and that's <clears throat> Motivation and belief is a huge thing in sports. And if they're a motivated team that believes in each other, that's fucking scary, man. That's fucking yep. scary. And all, 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 all the greats, you know, they, they find ways to motivate themselves. And it, it can be the same for, for a group and for a team. And mm -hmm. when people don't believe in you, and or even if you have to make it up, make it up too, but we don't have to make it up here because people are just completely sold. Uh, you know, they're like, oh, Duke doesn't have a chance. They're not good enough. They don't. They lack the effort. They lack the fight. Even though we saw it last weekend, that's fool's gold. I would. I mean, it's just not bulletin board material. It's actually a belief that you can say, "Fuck you." I'm not. I don't need to. You know, put it on the bulletin board. I'm just going to go out there and show you. And so, mm -hmm. if you can come out there in the first four or five minutes of that game with that same intensity, that same effort, you can be down ten to six. But if you show if you're showing me that effort, then I believe that you're going to win that game. Because sometimes you're not going to make shots, and that happens, especially when you're going into a new arena, new gym, yeah. you're kind of feeling it out against a different team. That shit happens. And, and, and Houston is a good team. They were number one, two, three all year because they are a good team. So we're not trying to say that, but we're saying that Duke has the talent and the ability. You match that with the effort and being pissed off, that's a scary combo. Mm -hmm. And and that's what we're all hoping to see. And shit, Pablo says if you don't believe that that's going to happen, you can kiss his black ass. And I hope he's right. <laughs> okay, yeah. We got we got some friends. Uh, we got some friends down at that arena who can help us learn the rims. That's true. Derek Lively, Kyrie, D Live, Kyrie in the building. Not Seth yep. anymore because Dallas, and then trade him a year later. But we got two. Yeah. And, They'll be there. Um, all right, so let's oh, yeah. get, let's get a couple of predictions here because I know you guys are gonna get the uh, the coach's corner going. So AC, you kind of already alluded to to your prediction, I believe. Eighty sixty five. Wow. Okay. Eighty to sixty five. It, it, unlike the Texas Tech game where we were down most of that game and had to come <clears> back or whatever, I don't see that. I don't see that happening this time. Like 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 you had just said. Like we're changing venues now, so all that shit goes out the window about Houston scoring a hundred points and they're capable and all the other stuff that they were saying after in the in the the post game uh, show or whatever on CBS. Look, Houston can score a hundred now, and you, we put that with that defense. Cool, man, that's cool. Like, nah, it ain't happening like that, bro. It is not happening like that. Like, we got the eighty to sixty five. I'll leave it at that. Fuck. Um, right, Jack, what do you got? Seventy eight to sixty one. This is a score that Duke. I feel like Duke scores 78 and gives up 61 a lot in the tournament. I remember it happening in the final four against Michigan State. I remember, I think that was the final score against Fullerton a few years ago in the first round. Can't be sure. Um, but it's a score that I, I know I, I see Duke score a lot. And uh, give me that again. Make a All statement. Right. All right, D, what do you got? Duke's going to score 80 plus, I think. Um Houston, they're probably going to hit some shots, 81-76, but I don't think Duke's ever in a situation where they're going to have to come back. I, I don't see this team getting down 10, 12 points to start the game. I, we're past that. Duke runs away with it. Yeah, I think, I think Houston's going to, you know, make their runs because they're a good team. But, you know, Duke <coughs> – if, if, if Duke shows me that effort that we've, you know, hammered home here today, then Duke's going to find a way to win this game. 74-67. I think it will be a little bit more scoring than that um, than, than, you know, the, the getting into the 80s. But I still think Duke finds a way to win because defensively we're really good. And I think we will hit our free throws down the stretch. Proctor, McCain, Roach on the line. That's cash. So give me Duke by that score. Pablo, I saved you for last. Talk to him. Man. You already know what time it is, man. I mean, I don't make no fucking predictions. All I know is Duke. He's a oh, that's how I get you the exit music, probably. Just, just fucking win, bro. 
<laughs> just fucking win, even though he put the intro music on on me. You know what I'm saying? Just, just win. Fucking win. And remember when I told you, Duke is a bad matchup for Houston. Houston is in trouble. Just fucking win, baby. Bandwagon is closed too, so don't don't hop back on after they beat Houston. Yeah, nah. yeah. It's, it's nah, stay on that side. Stay on that side. Back on, yeah, because uh, I will I will roast you on the timeline. We'll see you next year when it's flagging them come. Man. We only need y'all right now. Amen. If you're not with us, you're against us. Come on now. Lord. Let's go Duke. <laughs> Let's go Duke, baby. Duke, baby.